Second lesson, St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Brethren, hear what is read to you, and that is why you are always told that the kingdom of God has suffered violence. All the various Christian church denominations seek after this kingdom. But where are they because they quarrel and fight? They steal and tell lies. They indulge in concoction and charm. Does their behavior indicate that, you, that indicate to you that they will enter? Perilous times at end. A member of church denomination may decide to withdraw from his denomination because he feels that it is no more good for him and so he joins another denomination from where he backslides after some years. He then joins another church. Will changing from one church denomination to the other cause you to enter? Your entry does not depend upon going round the various church denominations, nor does it depend upon your criticizing the church denomination, but it depends upon your righteousness exceeding the righteousness of the Pharisees and scribe. If you love those who love you and hate those who hate you, what, re what reward have you? Even in this age, people find it difficult to love those who love them because people have adopted the system of hating those who love them because man is not only capable of doing any good thing but also very unpredictable. It is said, in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those who are good, traitors, heathy, high-mindedness, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Love your enemies. In the past, it was the order that you do good to those who do good to you and do evil to those who, are, who follow you with evil. But today, the table is turned. Whatever you do, no person rewards good for good, but evil for good. Is that the way through which people can enter into the kingdom of God? In this age, the person who eats your food and enjoys your wealth is the person who opposes you and cuts off your head. Do what you may to him. He will not appreciate it, but would rather plot evil against you. Brethren, you should realize that this is the final era because all the words of God spoken and written are prophesied and prophesied have now been made manifest. And it is indicated that when you see all these things, you should know that the end has come. The Son of Man is now on earth. The Father is on earth. And the Holy Spirit is also on earth. And that is the kingdom of God. And whoever will humble himself like a little child, he is the greatest in this kingdom. That is why you have been taught to humble, to be humble and meek, to enslave yourself to every person, to accept to be stupid in the matrimonial home and at the office, allow people to cheat you and oppress you. Do not mind it. Appear as if you are foolish and ignorant so that you may be wise. Accept whatever names you are called, whether they call you a thief, an entity, a madman, a, a, a witch, or an apparition, but continue to serve God in the kingdom. Count everything but loss. Yesterday you were a man of valor and courage and as powerful as the elephant. Every person who saw you was dead with fear because if you had a chance, you would knock him down and batter him everywhere 
and squeeze him to death. But today, because of this kingdom, you have become not only a simpleton, but a weakling. In the past, you were a great wrestler, a champion in games. You were never afraid of any person. But today, because of this kingdom, you are equal with others as little children. It was for a similar reason that St. Paul said, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for the sake of this kingdom. You have now been enjoined to count everything but lost in order to obtain the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus and for the sake of this kingdom. This is so because except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and scribes, you cannot enter into the kingdom. To obey is better than sacrifice. Humility does not consist in your kneeling down here alone, but also in obeying implicitly the instructions of God, doing those things you are asked to do and refraining from the acts of sinfulness, accepting to serve him by day and by night all the days of your life without arrogating yourself to any important position but adopting the position of a slave. It is quite easy for any person who obeys the instructions of God to enter into the kingdom for to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearten than the fat of rams. Repent and be saved. You were a person very fond of adorning yourself with gold, trinkets, necklace, bangles, rich wasps, finger rings. You are a member of several secret societies, but after receiving these words of life, the exhortations and injunctions of God that you should not adorn yourself with those things, you forsake them, it means you have entered. You had been a necromancer, a soothsayer, a juju priest, consulting oracles for people, deceiving them with your concoctions and defrauding them. You had been fond of keeping a number of girls for immoral behavior or keeping a number of men to deceive them and collect money from them through sex trade. However, on hearing the word of God, that it is sinful to consult an oracle or indulge in, concoc in concoction or have more than one woman or one man, you have immediately thrown away all your charms, talismans, fetishes, dismiss all your boyfriends and girlfriends and concubines and devote your attention to the service of God. You stand saved. You have established and owned a church denomination and have been consecrated bishop in it or have been appointed a traditional ruler in your community and all your citizens love you but by hearing that those who arrogate to themselves such positions are lost unless they become like little children you quickly abdicate your bishopric and throne humble yourself Relegate yourself to the background, lower yourself and serve others and enslave yourself to them. Then will you be able to enter into the kingdom. Have a childlike mind. You know what little children are, that no matter what you do to them, they are so innocent that they will not react because they have no thought. People do not often look or servants from among the adult and grown-up men or women, but it is very common to find them asking others to look for children for them as servants. Why do they want small children as servants? Because the children will fetch water, sweep up the floor, and dust the furniture, undertake manual tasks, and carry out feces. All of us sitting here are looking for children as servants. If a full-grown person presents himself before you that he wants to work for you as a servant, you will measure height, 
and then tell him to go for you will not find job for him because he is too big to be a servant. From his appearance, his looks, the type of dresses he puts on and the way he talks to you will cause you to realize that this that this that his stay in your house will involve many more things and if care is not taken he will take over the administration of the house from you and may even seduce your wife or daughter and make away with your valuable property all of us are looking for the, for little children and God himself is looking for little children if we could humble ourselves as little children then we would be the greatest in this kingdom you may accept to walk in the rain walk barefoot knock your head on the ground sweep the floor in your house or your place of work you do not look on to any person nor quarrel nor fight nor begrudge any person if you behave in this way, you are the greatest in this, in this kingdom. Some people argue that no person has ever insulted them and they have never been engaged in menial jobs and so they think that they are lucky. But there are some others who are of the same grade, age, educational attainment and yet stoop down to help small children carry their buckets at water tops we shall now have the golden text read to us golden text that matthew chapter 18 verse 4 whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven brethren have you heard what is read to you the implication of this statement is that the kingdom of God does not require money or educational qualification or wealth or position in life. That was why our Lord Jesus Christ said, Among them that are born of women, there are not risen a prophet greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he the great should be servant he also said that he also said of the princes of the gentiles exercise dominion over them and they that are great exercise authority upon them but it shall not be so among you but whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. The kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ requires humility. Somebody who is not puffed up, who, ab who abases himself and condescends to all men always striving to do what is good and to look for the good of others he accepts to serve others without looking for gratification for the service rendered when you visit a brother's house wash his clothes go to the market and buy his knees prepare his food sweep his house and dust the furniture wherever you go endeavor to serve people in the office at the market square when you meet people along the street try to serve them do not want any person to serve you but rather serve others this alone is the greatest position in this kingdom of god he who humbles himself will be exalted wherever you go to sit at the lowest seat where you will be prepared to serve every person who requires your service without showing any tendencies to pomposity, wisdom, intelligence, but practicing the words of God you receive, refraining from theft, fornication, falsehood, quarreling, and fighting, and from all other vices. You should be prepared at all times 
to listen to God's instruction and abide by them. Whoever does all these is the greatest in this kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whosoever loves instruction, loves wisdom, as you regard yourself as the most important personality, arrogating to yourself the position of a, of a prophetess, or a pastor, or a visioner, or the person who established the Bethel, or Christ student, or Christ servant, you are not worthy. You are not worth anything. You are angry at flimsy things. You complain that others always disgrace you. If somebody tells you the truth, you complain that he hates you. If somebody instructs you to refrain from vices, you quarrel with them. Whosoever loves, whosoever loves instruction, loves knowledge. But he who hates reproof is brutish. If we had come here as little children prepared to receive instruction given to us and prepared to carry out to carry out these instructions in practical terms, by now we would have gone very far in this kingdom. The work of God consists not only in, in God bestowing his abundant blessings on you, but in that you have to give your life as a ransom for many and also endeavor to work for the good of others. That is why it is said that this kingdom does not require any idle person, but requires that all should use their hands, their legs, their ears, mouth, eyes, and all parts of the body in the service of God. Whoever humbles himself as a child is the greatest. Imagine a situation in which a man drives to your house, and as soon as he gets out of the car, he takes a broom and starts to sweep your floor, takes up a bucket and runs down the stream to fetch water, which you compare and, con and contrast your position and his, how will you regard yourself in the circumstance? When such a person comes to your house, he will sit at the veranda expecting a formal welcome from you whether you will ask him to take his seat inside the sitting room wherever you lead he will follow he sits down quietly if you do not speak he does not speak whatever you tell him to do that will he do how will you regard such a stranger compare the attitude of this man with another person who comes to your house and feels so important that he begins to puff up and shout orders to persons why your house is unswept and unkempt. We'll ask you if you are not aware that the car outside is his and that he's a very important government functionary and that he takes nonsense from nobody. That appears to be the greatest problem confronting us. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever humbles himself as a very little child is presumed the highest in the kingdom of God. Interact peaceably with all men. It is a very simple action to take. Whenever somebody rebukes you for committing a certain offense, you plead with him and ask him not to be exasperated. If somebody asks you to do a certain thing for him, you have to do it. But if the but if after if he afterwards come back to tell you he does not like the way and manner you have done that thing, plead with him to show you how to do it properly. If any person comes to reprimand you for telling lies, do not be angry with him but apologize and ask him to forgive you for you will not tell lies again if you rebuke a certain person not to commit fornication because it is not expedient for any person to commit fornication he will inquire whether it is evil to fornicate 
and whether you do not commit fornication, if he realizes that fornication is bad, he will from that day refrain from it. In your own case, you would have caused a lot of confusion by telling people if what happened to them had happened to you, worse things would have happened and you would have made people to realize that you are the monarch of all the surveys. And so brethren, I do not intend to be tedious unto you. One stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Let those who have ears to hear, hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.